Warning, this radio program has been rated R for ridiculous. All listeners must be accompanied by their spirit guides. You're listening to Haunted Voices Radio. This is Haunted Voices. Join your host, Todd Bates, as he takes you on a journey into the unknown Haunted Voices Radio. It's a trip into the unknown. Chat with us live where even more interaction is provided. And now, here's your host and founder, Todd Bates. And a good evening, one and all, Haunted Voices Radio Live, right here, WGOG Digital Broadcasting. Those of you coming in on the old website, it is now activated. Also, be sure and join us on letstalkradio.net. That is the place to be. Join us in chat. You can log in right there through Facebook, Twitter. As a guest, just get your derriers in there. We've got an amazing show. Tonight is the infamous Wheel O Psychic program. And our two psychics this evening, none other than Ariel Grace. We're going to get, introduce her in just a moment. And Tristan Rimbo is joining us once again. Hey. Now, the way this works, it's really simple. What you do is you call in, we spin the wheel. And it could land on either Tristan, it could land on Ariel, or... It may land on me, and you would then get what is called a psychish reading. Completely just horrible, folks. I promise you, you will be none the wiser afterwards. But that's how the game works. It's going to be a lot of fun. So join us in chat. We'll post the call-in numbers here whenever the lines are open here in just a little while. I want to get some updates out of the way here. The website, the website, the website. That is still underway. It is in beta version so be sure and let us know if you see any bugs any glitches in there that way we can get those repaired for you we're also working on the chat room rebuilding that as well to make things even better for you fine folks it's real important that we get you to interact during these programs and a lot of the listeners out there well a lot of them aren't chatters and that's okay you guys can listen that's perfectly fine you can still interact with the program you can call in or you can email us at contact at letstalkradio.net. Just shoot us an email, contact at letstalkradio.net, and we'll be able to get those bugs squashed or, uh, you know, repair your feedback. That's what it's about. You give us a feedback, we listen to it, and we act upon it. And without further waiting here, we're going to introduce this evening's psychics for our psychic Wheel of Psychic show. This, this show's a lot of fun. This mm-hmm. show's a lot of fun. It's got sound effects and everything, folks. Really cheesy stuff, but it's a lot of fun. Now, first, ladies first. Joining us here, we've got Ariel Grace. Now, she's the host of A Gang of Girls Radio, and she's also an author. You could uh, catch her books right there at arielgrace.net. But if you don't mind, Ariel, just uh, share a few words on how you got into this and what you're all about. Uh, okay. Uh I got into this because, well, um, I'm psychic, not telepathic, and um, this was the best paying job on the block. Oh. So, uh, (laughs) at the time. And so I did it, and it was fun, and I enjoy it because I get to help people, and people get to help me too. It's kind of cool how it works. So, um, that's why I do it. It's... I'm not a psychic medium. I don't connect with, I don't normally connect with um, spirits that are your family members. Sometimes I do. Sometimes it happens. But um, it's very fun and I do enjoy it. And what I do is I assist people with their present and move them into their future. So it gets you all nice and clear and shiny and sparkly. Nice. Yeah, you can check it out at arielgrace.net. Eh, it's good to sparkle. Yes, it is. Yeah, sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> now, Tristan, what about you, my friend? Now, you, you've, you know, you're an author. You're also a psychic and, and a world-renowned one. You're just an amazing individual. What got you into all of this? Yeah. I've been working as a psychic medium now for coming up on, I believe, it's 17 years, 
And it's just a, a part of my life. It's not a career. It's not a job as much as it is a passion and a part of who I am. When I started working in 2001 as a psychic medium, when I discovered the possibility of it as a career, it was an instantaneous Oprah aha moment that it was not just a career choice, but it was a life choice that it was meant to be a part of who I am and what I do, uh, both personally as well as professionally. I had grown up in a haunted home and grew up with a mother who was psychic. So spirit communication and the conversation of was a, a prevalent force in our home as a child. Uh, as soon as I started working as a psychic professionally, it was just an instant moment of this is what I'm supposed to be doing and this is who I am. Wow. And I could only imagine some of the readings both of you have had over the years and, and encounters with the unknown, so to speak. And it, it, it has to be an endeavor having this kind of gift to where not, not only that you can, you can read people or, or, you know, talk to those that have crossed over, but it has to be irritating. I mean, do, do, can either of you two shut this off? Is it something that's always with you? Can you say, Hey, go away for a minute. Um, how do you, how do you get it to calm down? Uh, Ariel, I'll start with you first. How do you get the, these things to calm down? I just turn the volume down. So yeah. they still talk, but it's like Charlie Brown. Yeah. Kind of like Charlie Brown. It's well, I'm still very much aware of, of what's going on, but my focus is in a different place. So like this weekend, um, we had company and there was a lot of spirits around my cousin and I, and they were talking to us and I was able to like go, okay guys, hold on. I got to talk to Chris first before you know, before letting it, that information come in. Okay. So it's it's kind of like you. Sh what I do is like I shift my focus and, you know, everybody has to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what it is. I, I don't know how it, how it happens. But, no, I don't think it ever gets turned off or turned down or anything like that. I just feel like the focus, your focus shifts a little bit to where you're able to get the things done that you need to get done during your day. Hmm. Now, Tristan, what, what about you? Same thing for you? When It depends on what time period of my career. At the beginning of my career, I was only 20 years old. I was one of the youngest psychic mediums in the world on radio and television, if wow. not the youngest. Yeah. And, and for me... I was an open book at the very beginning. I did not understand how to control it. I was that person who would stop someone in a grocery store and say, you know, did your mother recently die? I learned through doing readings for clients, both in person and over the telephone, to control my awareness of what I focus on. Essentially, because I'm a man, I access that aspect of my personality that is completely uh, disconnected from known reality. Men are very notorious for listening with one ear and <laughs> not really truly paying attention to what the person is saying. So for me, I just learned to separate my mind from the spirit conversation through trial and error, through reading for clients and learning how after the reading to turn it off. And there are times that if it's a very intensive reading, if it's a suicide, if it's a traumatic death, those readings can be more difficult to separate myself from afterwards. But my spirit guides and God and my angels have always really guided me and, and taught me how to get out of what I'm seeing and how to convey it, but not be a part of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very well said. And, and, and going through all of this uh, from, from the, from the start up until now, I'll, I'll ask each of you, what is your, your most memorable experience, a life changing experience? If you change, if it changed your life or if it changed the life of one of your clients, uh, Ariel, we'll start with you. What do you think is your most memorable 
experience, something that either changed your life with with a client or the client's life? Ugh, uh, a lot. Of, wow, there's been a lot of them. Um, I think my most memorable experience was uh, teaching clarity, teaching this clarity one hundred and one. It's an intuition class that I used to teach, um, and it was seeing everyone get it, seeing everyone being able to connect to. Uh, I think we were doing a meditation. They were connecting to their spirit guides. And you could tell when the peeps actually got to connect because they they shifted. And when I saw it happening, I was like, wow, this is effective and it's affecting them and it's affecting me. It was really a very, it was very awesome the first time we did that class. So, yeah. Okay. I'm sure that helped you, helped a lot of others as well. And, yeah. and, and Tristan, what about you? What's your most memorable? For me, a lot of the times when you do a psychic reading for someone, it is a one-time experience. They're going through something in their lives. They're going through a divorce. They're going through the loss of a family member. They're going through losing a job or starting a new job. And oftentimes, it is relatively uncommon to hear from the client after the fact. They will tell you during the reading at the end of it, you know, if it helped them, they will say, thank you so much. This was a big help for me. The information made a lot of sense. Uh, my perspective's a little bit different now. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, a lot of the times you never hear from the person again until they book another reading. Um, over the years when clients have sent me letters and emails or sent me a present in the mail, those mean the world to me because there are so many times that I don't hear back from a client until they book another reading a year later or two years later. So I, I keep a file and I have hundreds of letters and, and emails that I've printed out from over the years. All of those are sort of a part of my greatest memories, but on a personal level, Years and years ago, there was a psychic that I had met in a New Age holistic festival. She was a vendor at the same festival uh, offering appointments. Um, she and I became friends for a short period of time, and she was pregnant and typically hosted every year a class on how to listen to your intuition for graduating high school seniors at a high school in Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, good age. That's cool. She, she was uh, too far into her pregnancy that particular year to host the class. And she emailed me and, and asked me if I would come to Cincinnati and, and host the class for her. Uh, for me, it was an immensely transformative experience because when I was a kid, I was bullied relentlessly to the point of becoming suicidal and suffering from uh, manic depressive disorder and obsessive compulsive disorder. I went to therapy for years. Um, I was made fun of every single day throughout most of middle school and all of high school to the point of my parents pulling me out of public school wow. and putting and putting me in a public Christian academy, it traumatized me. And I had a nervous breakdown at the age of 17. And, and I made a lot of bad decisions after that and became an addict and lived in Los Angeles and knew all the wrong people. So for me, all those years later, to be a psychic medium and to be working and to be successful and to stand in front of a class of high school seniors I was petrified to do it. I There was a part of my persona that was afraid that the kids would laugh at me and it would literally be sort of post-war syndrome and bring back bad memories. But it was literally the completely the opposite ex experience. The, the kids were mesmerized by every single thing that I talked about. And at the end of it, what really got me is there was a boy in the front row and he was like the jock of his class, like the quarterback football player, as straight as he could be. You could tell that he was sort of like one of the popular kids. Uh, he came up to me when I was getting ready to leave and said, that was the coolest class I've ever been to. Could I like shake your hand or give you a hug or something? And it moved me immensely 
not only that the kids were so respectful and so interested, but that one of the kids that I would never have thought would have even been interested in it treated me like a human being and treated me with respect. And and it quite literally changed my life to host that class. That's cool. That's what, awesome. Yeah, what, what an amazing thing to do. I mean, this is something that, uh, th- this is a field that, that really confuses a lot of people. I mean, I've been confused about it for years. <laughs> I'm as sensitive as a brick here. And these people calling in, they're going to be getting some very important readings, you know, one question reading. We'll, we'll try to keep it to that, folks. So let's be fair to everybody. But they're, you're going to, they're going to be getting some readings. Now these, these can be life changing. Um, but with these readings and when we open the lines for these people to receive them, are there ways they can alter their future? Like say you guys, uh, one of you, one of you to tell them, Hey, you're going to get married soon or I see uh, a financial windfall in your future. Can the person actually change that or alter that in any way? Go ahead, Tristan. Not necessarily. People hate hearing this from me, but life is predestined. God is not taking a coffee break. Every single thing that happens to you in your life happens to you for a reason. And you are a part of either a subconscious or a conscious or both of a choice for that to happen in your life. There is no such thing as an accident. There's no such thing as an accidental death. Whether it's a child or someone who is 90 years old, it was supposed to happen. Uh, And that can be hard for people to understand. What I always tell people is the, the Holy Bible talks about free will. We do have free will, but life is also predestined. And a lot of people don't understand that both of those are parallel to one another. Mm. Yeah. The th- the things that are going to happen to you are supposed to happen. Your free well your free will is your choice to react to it, to learn from it, to grow from it and for it to be an experience for you. So whereas let's say you're supposed to get married and you're supposed to get divorced and that's a part of your destiny, that's a part of what we often refer to as your chart in the new age community. That's going to happen in your life. Your reaction is your choice. What Uh you learn from the marriage, what you learn from the divorce, those are not a part of your chart. Those are physical free will. (laughs) Yeah, we've all screwed that up. Opinions, you know, yeah. And sometimes we even work it out in our destiny for our opinion to be a part of the choice as well. So it's not a cut or dry, yes or no, black or white kind of thing. The road that we're walking upon is not a straight road. It has many side paths. And as we get older, as we live our lives, we may choose a side path and feel that we've lost our way or feel that we're walking in the wrong direction. That path is connected to the main path of your life. And even if you feel like that you're going down the wrong road, there is no wrong road with God. You will eventually end up back on what most people refer to as the main path or the straight way or the way that you're supposed to be going, but you weren't lost in the first place. So when when a psychic tunes into someone, oftentimes we're simply tuning into the road that they're walking. Whether we're looking at the road behind them or looking at the road ahead of them, or looking at a fork in the road ahead that they're probably going to take. When we tune into that, we can tune in and say, okay, you have a marriage coming up and then there's a divorce coming up as well. The timing, whether they choose a side road or not, whether the marriage happens quickly or slowly, whether they meet the person in five years or three years, your free will plays a role in the timing as well. Well, well, well said. And that's something all of you need to adhere to because uh, coming up, we're going to be playing the Wheel O Psychic here. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we all just may screw up and learn something about each other. That's what I love about this program. More haunted voices when we come back. Join us in chat. Let's talk radio.net. We'll be right back. Absolutely. On 
positively has to be the best. WGOG DB Clearwater. Let's talk. Haunted. A Psychic Story by author and radio host Ariel Grace. This is not your average book of hauntings. Haunted A Psychic Story is written from a psychic perspective and contains true stories and some handy tips. Written in three parts, Haunted A Psychic Story contains chilling adventures, advice from the archangels, and helpful tips used by Ariel Grace to clear haunted homes around the globe. Haunted, a psychic story is available on Amazon or you can download straight to your Kindle. Haunted, a psychic story by Ariel Grace. Get your copy today. Terry Lovelace is a 64-year-old retired lawyer and former assistant attorney general. The earliest alien experience Terry can recall was when he was eight years old. Incident at Devil's Den. In May of 1963, he saw a UFO and described it as a perfect silver disc. Three years later, on a clear night, he saw a second flying disc outside his second-story bedroom window. Incident at Devil's Den. In 1975, while serving as a medic in the Air Force, he witnessed yet another UFO hovering 50 feet over an ICBM missile silo. Incident at Devil's Den. Two years later, while he and a friend were camped in an isolated state park known as Devil's Den, Terry had a life-changing fourth encounter. Not only did Terry and a friend witness an estimated five-story high UFO, but this fourth encounter would be an epic, life-altering event. Incident at Devil's Den by Terry Lovelace. Digital download or paperback now available on Amazon. Keep your online visitors engaged with Rumble Talk Chat Service. With over 2 million chatters on over 200,000 websites, Rumble Talk is a proven professional chat room service. With an easy to install Rumble Talk chat room, you can share rich media, chat on the go from your mobile phone or tablet, integrate on popular social media pages, blogs, mobile apps, and websites. Add a stylish HD HTML5 Rumble Talk Chat Room theme or create your own custom Rumble, Rumble, Talk Rumble Talk Chat Room. Rumble Talk gives you the ability to control any aspect of your chat room's appearance, images, colors, backgrounds, borders and fonts, and overall style. With Rumble Talk's easy account management, you can manage all your Rumble Talk Chat Rooms from one account. Now that you've found your chat room solution, visit rumbletalk.com for your free seven day trial today. Your visitors are waiting. Rumble Talk Chat Service. RumbleTalk.com. Let's Talk Radio started out with nothing. There's nothing here. And we still have most of it. Yay! WGOG DB Clearwater. Let's Talk. Twenty-three minutes past the hour. Haunted Voices Radio Live. Let's talk radio.net. Yes, the lines are open. Don't worry. I know a lot of you guys have been chomping at the bits here, and we're trying and trying and trying and trying. And we do want to thank you very much for your patience. Now the lines are open, so when you do call in, you can find those numbers right there in the main page. Let's talk radio.net or in chat. And when you do call, make sure you have your players muted. If not, we'll get some feedback, and well, we'll just hang up on you. <laughs> so it's that simple. So we appreciate that. Um, and also, if you don't want to call in, we understand there's some shy folks out there or people on their mobile phones and so forth, you can post your question right there in our live chat room. To enter that, you go to letstalkradio.net, and there's a little chat bubble down there in the lower right-hand corner. You just click that little bubble, log in through Facebook, Twitter as a guest, register, whatever you like. It's all free of charge. You can get right in there. Post your question in all capital letters in chat, and we'll spin the wheel for you as well. So we can do it multiple multiple ways. Now remember, when we spin this wheel, the rules are it's either going to land on Tristan, Ariel, or, oh, God forbid, myself. Todd. Now, if it hits me, I have no psychic abilities whatsoever. 
I'm what's called an intuitive. It's gas. Okay, it's bad. It's psychish. <laughs> Uh, you will not be none the wiser afterwards, and, and probably you'll be publicly humiliated. But it's all going to be a lot of fun, and don't worry, these two are here to clean up the mess, I promise. <laughs> now, on with the Wheel of Psychic program. Again, we have special guest Tristan Rimbo, who, by the way, yeah. I just said uh, to Ariel, again, for the probably thousandth time, yeah. gave me my first reading ever, folks, many years ago. My first reading ever. Just, just want to say that. He's very good. And we have the lovely, beautiful, and talented Ariel Grace here with us as well. And you can check, uh, check out their websites. Their links are posted in chat, TristanRimbo.com and ArielGrace.net, just to see how amazing these folks are. And we do have our first contestant on the line. Call your live haunted voices radio. Where are you calling from? Topeka. Bonnie. Kansas. Yeah. Oh my. My God. <laughs> are you ready for this? Yeah, I sure am. Are you ready to spin the wheel and see where it lands? Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Honey, kick that with your foot. Okay. And Tristan. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Not that I wouldn't like you. <laughs> You're lucky. Awesome too. You're lucky. You are very lucky. He's tuning into you now. He's he's uh, really cool like that. Awesome. Yes, he is. I know that. And did you have a question you'd like for me to focus on for you? Well, yes, I am always open to any of my um, loved ones that have passed over the other side or anything, but I just wanted to know if I, well, actually, I would really like to know about my brother because I just don't know where he is, and okay. he's been missing for more than a year. Okay, and um, what was your first name? I didn't catch it. Oh, my first name is Bonnie. Bonnie. Okay. Yes. I get, um, I, uh, what I always tell people is when I tune in, oftentimes I will get more than one thing. I oftentimes will see every subject that I'm going to focus on right at the beginning and they'll sort of all come in at once. They okay. focus on several things connected to you. I get family connections and I was also getting con a connection with you and, and your life in general. I feel like that in 2018, there is a sense of movement for you over the course of the year, especially during the summertime. So this would mean to me either that there are work or financial changes for you over the course of 2018, either changing your work schedule or taking another job or doing something part time on the side. There, there is movement connected to your professional life and your uh, financial life. And I get a lot of that movement more so connected to June and connected to July, to summertime. Also, there's a physical connection to it. I feel like that there is a sense of traveling in 2018 as well. So whether it's going on a short road trip or going on an actual vacation or, or to visit family, you know, in another state or another area, I do feel like there is a sense of, of traveling connected to it as well. Now, with your brother, he uh, is missing in the in the physical, uh, correct? Yes. I feel like that there there's a lot connected to this. I feel like that this goes back into the past, which means that he's been missing for a while, that this is not a recent occurrence. And I also feel like it was there either police involvement or a detective it being involved? Ha has there been a an official search for him? Well, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'm sure that um, in the past there's been some uh, authority, authorities involved, but not, I'm not sure if it's with his search. I'm not sure. Okay, because I feel like that th there's a lot that goes into that, and I feel like that they're they're giving 
I'm trying to figure out how to describe the way that they're showing this to me. I, I, I don't know if I want to say that this is a recurring theme that he has disappeared before or, yes. it, or, or if they're giving that this is not the first time or that this is the, the second or the third or the fourth time. I just feel like that there's a continuity in the past with this, that this has happened before. Yes. And I, and, and I uh, feel like that there is a sense of addiction or a sense of mental health concern with him. Has he had issues with drugs or issues with bingers where he has done things or been with people that have been unhealthy for him? Yes, he has. And he's a veteran and um, he's, you know, has some problems with uh, Oh, drugs, I guess. And yeah, I don't, yeah, alcohol too. His, so. his mind, when I tune into him, I get several things. I get that his mind snaps shut. When I get a mind that snaps shut, it means that they don't want to be found, they don't want to be tuned into, and they have post traumatic syndrome from something, either from addiction or from serving in the Army or the Navy or both that there's a sense of shutting down with him. So what I would say to you is this literally feels like a person who doesn't want to be found. I don't feel like that this is a kidnapping. I don't feel like that this is someone who has gone missing, who went to Yosemite Park and got lost. I feel like that this is someone who has actively disappeared in their life by choice and that he has disappeared again on purpose, but I get a sense of the mind shutting with him, which means to me that there's mental uh, concern there, that there's either post-traumatic syndrome or there's depression, and that that is feeding into addiction for him. Uh, I don't mean for it to be disrespectful, but I literally feel like that he is unhealthy, and there's a sense of him living an unhealthy life and that he sometimes goes on what I would call a binger where he just makes bad choices and he disappears. So I feel like that he is in one of those and it is directly tied to 2017. It's directly tied to last year. So I don't know if if he disappeared last year and has been gone since or if he was uh, had an issue with his addiction in 2017 or if he tried to seek treatment and had issues where he rejected the treatment ultimately. But I feel like that there's a sense of him being unhealthy and, and that's what sort of comes across. I feel like that spirit says to let it be that his choices are individualized and that he is not doing these things uh, to hurt other people as much as he's doing these things to hurt himself. Okay. Hmm. But does that um, mean or do you see that he's still alive? I don't know beyond that because I was trying to be nosy as I was talking. Anytime I'm talking during a reading, I'm also listening as I'm talking. And I will oftentimes ask them questions while I'm talking to the client. And sometimes they'll literally just tell me that I can't see it or that I'm not getting a connection to it. With his mind being a shut trap, he's one of those people where I'm going to be able to tune in and see something and then nothing at all. And then I'll see something and then nothing at all. It's all about whether he is open to me tuning in or not. Even if the person that I'm reading for is not sitting down with me physically, their spirit knows if they're being focused on. And it is very common for me to get from somebody who is even still here in the physical or even someone in spirit a sense that they don't want to be tuned into and they want their privacy and they don't want to be focused on. So I'm not okay. sure where he is or wh- or if he's mm-hmm. going to resurface or not. Uh, but there is a future connection to this. So there is more movement, which oftentimes means that he does pop up again and that people do find him again. Oh, okay. Very good. What do you think, Bonnie? Thank you. I think that's awesome. Thank you very much. You, and do, I do you really work, appreciate Bonnie? it. Do, do you yes. work, Bonnie? Do you work in the healthcare field or in a hospital? Um, no, my daughter does. She's a social worker in a hospital. Is she pregnant yet? <clears throat> no, she's got two kids and she's done. <laughs> okay, so she's already got the two. Is she still in the marriage with the man from one of the babies? Yes, with both of them. Okay. I I I don't know. 
even though she's at an age where she's done with babies, there is still uh-huh. movement there for her connected to being a mother. So whether it's adoption oh. or whether it's another relationship where there's a where you know where she becomes a stepmom, uh, I'm not mm-hmm. trying to stir. I'm not trying to stir the pot. I'm just trying <laughs> to say uh, is there there. I, don't, I just get a sense of motherhood with her. You know, mind you, with her already having two children, I could be tuning into the motherhood connected to those two kids because I was picking up on the healthcare connection as well. Now with you, are you working at the moment? No, I'm retired. You're retired, okay. Mm-hmm. As I was focusing on earlier, uh, even though you're retired, there is some movement for you in terms of work in 2018, You know, whether it be oh, hobby-based or you deciding to do something part-time or you deciding to help out at a daycare or, or whatever the case is, you've got a little bit of movement there of, of getting involved in something, whether it may be involved through a church service, but I feel like you have some movement in terms of your activity in, in this 2018. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And sure it's does. connected to June, July. It's connected to summertime. I get a sense of activity for you in, in your own life. Now, is your mother crossed over? Yes. She says hello. She wanted to oh. be very she wanted to be very polite about it. Your mother waited until the very end. Was she either Catholic or Christian? Catholic. Well, okay. she um wanted to be it's she raised us as Catholic, but she wasn't Catholic, but my dad was. And then later I um, arranged for her to be baptized in the Catholic Church and um, their marriage to be blessed by the Catholic Church. And that's what she wanted. Yes. And that she, was right shortly she, before her passing. She considers herself a Catholic? Yes. And she was showing me that she had a religious passing to God which means to me that she either had a Catholic or a Christian passing. And also she literally came across like a very polite Catholic woman who wanted to wait her turn. Okay. <laughs> so so there's, a, there's a sense of her, she was aware of the reading and aware of what I was doing. And I feel like I get a very sweet, calming energy with your mother. Her passing was very abrupt. Did she either get sick very quickly or was she hospitalized very quickly? Or did she die unexpectedly? She was sick for a while. And then um, actually her uh, bring, being brought back home, she passed away. Um, like with 24 hours. So they brought her back home thinking maybe she might be able to make it at home and then she died? They brought her back home with hospice and we didn't know when, but it was within 24 hours. Because she talks about it being very abrupt, like I just got home and then I died. Right, that was it. Um, and she's doing very well. She gives a very strong Catholic vibe. She was she comes across very polite and very sweet. She says that there's more than one kid, so I'm assuming you have siblings. Yes. Um, she wants she wants to mention that. Um, she mentions the daughter and says, "I see the daughter, and I want to validate her." And who is Catherine? Catherine. Um, oh gosh, I don't know. It could be a relative or something. Yeah, but. just just keep it in mind because she was mentioning that she sees Catherine and she was giving me that name. So that could be either somebody crossed over that she knows or somebody that's here in the physical that she's referencing in the family. But I feel like that oh, okay. she says that she lived a long life mm-hmm. and that she was content with her passing because she knew she was going to God. And she says that she's doing okay, but she does miss the home because she really loved her house. Yes. Uh, Yeah, she did. And that's, oh, I wanted to go back there and just kind of feel the vibes, but. Yeah. She really loved that house. And I don't know if it had a nice garden outside or a night and like nice, landscaping around the windows but she just says i i i'm uh, you know looking at the physical life she says i miss that house um and mm-hmm. and she was showing me like out in the yard or or trees or what have you maybe she used to you know look out the windows at the the landscaping and the the trees and the flowers um but but she she's remembering it with fond memories she says she has fond memories of that house oh yeah she was there for many many years and at the you know last tried to 
put but some things doing, out there that she liked. But she's doing good. She says hello, and she yeah. wanted to make sure that I got that in there for you. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad. <laughs> thank you for calling in. Thank you very much. Nice, and, nice, um, nice. And come on. Thank you, you. You are welcome, hon. You are more than welcome. Great, great, great reading. Talk to you soon, Bonnie. Take Here's, care, hon. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wow, good job, Tristan. As usual, that's that's. I'm, hor- I'm horrible at sound bites, so I was sitting there trying to tell myself, speed it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the thing. Don't worry about that because when when these come through, um, that's something I want to remind the audience as well. When you guys tune in and you're 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 attached to that person, as I'll, I'll call it, um, you have to get this information out, or or it bugs you, right? I mean, it's just going to sit there and oh, eat at you big time. Yeah. I, I usually I've even gone to breaks before, and I've done radio shows where I have done more of a reading during the break than I have on the air because I couldn't stop, and I asked them to keep the person on hold. Okay. Yeah, I mean, any, and, and you know the drill with me. Any, anything you feel, anything you need me to do, anything you need me to switch, that's how it goes, because I don't want to interrupt anybody's reading. Now, I know when you land on me, if you land on me tonight, folks, I know it's going to be a little, you know, comedic, okay? That's, that's, that's just kind of the whole idea behind it. Um, so I'm not, you know, trying to, to, uh, you know, poke fun at anybody. I just, uh, throw that in there. It's kind of like getting the, wah, 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 that thing on the gong show. So, but that, that, that's that's the fun of this is you don't know who you're going to land on. It's all a mystery kind of thing. Um, I, I spin the wheel and I pull a name out of a hat. That's how it goes. And there's three in there. It's that simple. Now, what we're going to do is we do have another caller on the line. And we're going to take this call here before break. And then we've got two questions from Chad as well that, that's coming in. Mm-hmm. Now, well, that caller got cold feet. Looks like they chickened out. Um, <laughs> it happens. So what we're going to do, we're going to skip off here. This way we can start fresh when we come back. We're going to skip off here to a break because we have just a couple minutes anyway. And when we come back, we're going to take those two questions from chat, cat, Wendy, hang tight. When we come back, you two are going to spin the wheel on the wheel of psychic show. Tristan Rimbo, Ariel Grace, our, our psychics this evening. Join us in chat, folks. Those of you just tuning in. Let's talk radio.net. It's real simple. Log in through Facebook, Twitter as a guest. Just get your derrieres in there. You can post your question in all capital letters, or you can call. The numbers are provided on the website or in the chat room. More Haunted Voices when we come back. Stay tuned. In 2012, Keith Linder, after successfully obtaining a management position at a prestige healthcare company, decides the time is right for him and his girlfriend to move in together. That's putting things lightly. Weird things begin to happen within days of moving into the modern suburban home. The horrors they witnessed and desperately tried to fight off would end up putting them at the odds with members of the paranormal community and themselves. This gripping story told from the house occupant's point of view not only lists tales, but also includes pictures, video reenactments, commentary, and audio of the events being reported. Author Keith Linder does not ask you to believe him. He only asks you to listen. The Bothell Hell House by Keith Linder, now available on Amazon. The book, The Bothell Hell House, the author, Keith Linder. Order yours today on Amazon. If you've ever wondered what your dog, cat, bird, or any other animal is thinking or trying to tell you, now's the time to crack their code. Make this year the year you learn telepathic animal communication and begin using the intuitive and psychic abilities we all have to connect with other species. The free website Speak Good Human is the perfect place to start. Speak Good Human is the Internet's largest free animal communication practice site. It features tips, advice, how to and more than 100 animals ready to help you practice and build your skills through telepathic conversation. And each February and August, you can join the thousands of other learners worldwide for the Animal Communication Practice Challenge, when you'll get daily encouragement, inspiration, and camaraderie as you pursue your dream of talking with animals. Get in on the conversation at www.talktoanimals.weebly.com. That's talktoanimals.weebly.com. Or Google Speak Good Human. Not Only will your companion animals thank you, but you'll finally be able to hear it. Let'sTalkRadio.net
45 minutes past the hour, you're tuned in to Haunted Voices Radio. I'm your host, Todd Bates, of course. Those of you just tuning in, join us in chat. We're having the Wheel O Psychic program. It is amazing. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Now, what you do, those of you just tuning in here, you call in, and the numbers are provided on the main website, letstalkradio.net, or in our live chat room. You can call in. We'll spin the wheel, or if you like, you can post your question right there in chat or via Twitter, and be sure and just post it all capital letters if you're doing chat. That way we can kind of distinguish it. And then the way it works, I spin the wheel. Now, you can land on <laughs> our first guest, Tristan Rimbo, world-renowned psychic, amazing individual, or the lovely, talented Ario Grace, and get an actual psychic reading. If you do land on me... You get a reading, but it's of the psychish kind, <laughs> because I'm as sensitive as a brick, and I'll just pretty much lay out the life in front of you that maybe you want or maybe you don't want. You never know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I just start babbling. That's the fun part of it. Now, don't worry. One of these two are here to clean up the mess for me. <laughs> but, uh, you do <laughs> land on me, so don't sweat that. Either way, you get a reading, but we have to go with uh, where the cards lie. That's what this program is about, and it's a lot of fun, so... You know, that being said, if you do call in, make sure your player is muted in the background. That way we don't get any feedback, anything of that nature. And then we can go ahead and, uh, you know, continue without any of that uh, nasty feedback. Now, what we have here, we have got a chat room question. Now, this is from Cat. So what I'm going to do, Cat, is I'm going to spin the wheel. And then wherever this wheel lands, that is where... Your fate lies. It's Uh-oh. that simple. <laughs> so let's spin the wheel. Here you go, cat. Oh, you are lucky. That was one away from me. Ariel. Oh. Now, cat's oh, question. Cat's question. Her question is, as these bizarre weeks seem to be finally shaking out. Yeah. I know we still have a lot, uh, have a bit of time left in retrograde. I'm having trouble following my path. Any guidance for direction at this point is appreciated. So, uh, one of the things that I have found about Mercury in retrograde And I do share this with a lot of people, is that Mercury in retrograde helps us, like, slow down and look at how we want things to work out or what resonates with us, gets us clear of maybe things that are holding us back, you know, or makes us aware of that. Um, It's a time where you go introspective. And you really look at what does Cat want, how does Cat want it, and what resonates with Cat. Because whatever resonates with Cat is what you chose to do, you know. So I feel like with you, you're there. You're like in the midst of it. So keep looking at what it is you want, you know, and develop a strategy too of how to obtain that goal while Mercury is in retrograde. Once it goes out of retrograde, then you can put it into action. But the retrograde will really help you discern what you do want and what you don't want and how to mix it up to where it feels good to you. So uh, Mercury goes out of retrograde. It stations direct on uh, April, I think it's April 15th. So take advantage of this time right now of moving slow, listening to your guides and angels because I know you can hear them, Kat, and just really looking at how you want your office, how you want maybe your home, talking to the spirits that live downstairs with you, um, and asking them too for inspiration because they're organizational freaks, those guys. They'll help you out. They'll inspire you. So that's what I suggest you keep doing. You're not off your path. You don't get off your path. You may look at different things outside of your path, 
but you are not off your path at all. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, you know, that's that's the thing. I, I guess everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And it's good to have this guidance from either Tristan or Ariel. Oh, God knows not myself. Um, but it's, it's, it's good to have that. That way... You know, it kind of gives you that 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 confidence, that extra push to stay on the path. Because I I know uh, personally, I'm on a path that's uh, got a lot of trials, tribulations, uh, reverse karma, uh, balanced karma, and you know, it, it's just I, I try to take it with a grain of salt. You know, the good days and bad days. It's tough. It is tough out there, and guidance from these two really does help because we just need to see that light, something, some something with a little bit of hope. Now, coming up next year, it looks like we have Wendy from chat with a question. Let me spin the wheel here. Now, this should be interesting, Wendy. Oh, Oh, Wendy. (laughs) Ah, Wendy landed on me. Um... (laughs) No. This is the folks. This is going to be absolutely horrible. Um, Wendy's question, and and both of you try to tune in on this because somebody's going to have to save the day on this one. Uh, <laughs> Wendy's question: I've been sick for over a month now. I am thinking of making some changes to my life regarding my own show and a few other things. Should I push forward with these changes or? Hang on a bit longer to see if my perspective changes again as I feel better. <sighs> let me uh, let me let me see here what what they're doing. They're telling you to tell me. Um, hmm. uh, keep your shell the way it is. Uh, I'm getting a feeling here that Thursday nights are coming open here at Let's Talk Radio. Um, don't. Um, um change change is something you need that's what i'm feeling now as far as being sick for over a month now i'm 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 getting it's not a serious illness and you're only going to get better here now with uh the hanging on you're just going to have to stick to it you know, you you you, you uh, put up the good fight, and um, I don't whine so much. Uh, a lot of whining. That's what I'm feeling with you, Wendy. Um, you just need, yeah, suck up and deal with it. Um, as far as life concerned, it, it, it's it's one of those things you you got to live it every day, regardless. And I know you think it's uh, treating you badly right now. It's not. Yeah, yeah. The complaining. Um, if there is a male in your future, um, because of this, he's not there now. Um, because of the whining. Yeah, it's a whining thing. Yeah, the complaining. Um, as far as your voice, the thing with your voice, I'm. You're losing it because, yeah, I don't think it's going to return. It's one of those things where uh, you're going to start sounding like B. Arthur. Um, Right on that borderline between male and female, the B. Arthur kind of, yeah. And facial hair is coming because of that testosterone. That's why you're losing your voice is your testosterone level. Um, It is exceeding your estrogen so, I, I don't know if you're familiar with this, Wendy, or you're going to accept this or not, but you, you are becoming a man. So, it's um, it's probably because of the whining thing, reverse karma. So, hang in there. Chopper's coming. Um, it's not bad being a man. It really isn't. You'll get used to it. So, hang in there. Uh, Tristan, you want to clean this up? <laughs> <laughs> I will say you were dedicated. What 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 a lot of the times when somebody sends in a question or ask a question when they call, uh, I have met and read for a lot of people over the years 
who themselves are intuitive and they will answer their own question during the question Mm. because they are already hitting the nail on the head with why they're thinking the way that they are and why they're questioning what they're questioning. So in, in, in the case of Wendy, she was saying, should I make changes now or should I wait and see if my perspective changes? She already intuitively answered her own question because her intuition was already telling her that what you're going through right now is temporal and that your perspective is going to change and in that your life will change with it. It is not so much that she needs to make any immediate changes in her life or that she's done anything wrong to become sick or that she is squandering her time. It is simply a temporal perspective. So I would say to her intuitively, you already know the answer to the question. You don't need to make any immediate changes because things are going to get better. And as they get better, your perspective is going to change. Oftentimes when someone is sick, whether it's a common cold or a serious illness that puts them in the hospital, their perspective is swelled around that sickness and it consumes everything about them and it becomes a part of their life. It becomes a part of their experience and a part of their personality. What you have to remember is that no matter what the sickness is, you were not born with it. It is not a part of who you are as a spirit. It is not something you came into this life with. It is a temporal experience and it is not who you are. So wrapping your perspective around that sickness and feeling defeated or feeling down or feeling that things are not going to change, all of that is a side effect, a symptom, not of the medication that that you're on or the treatment that you're getting or the treatment you're not getting. It is a side effect of the sickness feeling in the moment that things are not right that something is wrong and therefore that something must be wrong with you. There are times that you have to learn to separate yourself from your physical experience in the moment and recognize that even if the toilet overflows on Tuesday, it will not overflow on Thursday and you will live to see Thursday. So your perspective will change in that very same bathroom two days later. In the moment... (laughs) In the moment when you get caught up in making decisions or trying to make decisions when you're in a negative space, you will create more stress and more negativity for yourself that is unnecessary. When someone is angry, when they're mad, when they're resentful, when they don't feel well, their perspective is jaded because they're trying to adapt to the circumstance. The best thing for anyone who is dealing with sickness is hope. And hope is based in faith, and faith is is based in spirit. And spirit is who you are and who you were before any of the things that are happening to you right now ever happened. So just as you were fine when you were born, you will be fine after all of this passes, and your perspective will change. So what I usually tell the people who are going through sickness is their intuition oftentimes will kick in 10 times more when they're sick than when they're well to try to guide them to not fall in that tr- into that trap, to right. not fall into that hole of negativity and resentment because it becomes a spiral effect where instead of just dealing with sickness, you're now also dealing with negative thinking. Mm. And are two separate issues that are not connected to one another. So whatever that that Wendy can do to get out of that negative perspective, whether it's listening to a meditation, listening to good music, taking a nap, taking a bath, watching a TV show, having a conversation with a a friend, screaming at the top of her lungs to the universe and, and having an open conversation with God and with the universe, they understand where you're coming from. They understand your fears they understand your experiences and they don't want you to suffer through it 
they want your free will, as I was talking about earlier, your perspective to be one of positivity. They want you to learn from whatever you're going through and have it better your life instead of it becoming a spiral effect where you just jump down the hole. I was watching the new Star Wars film a few days ago, The Last Jedi. Right. And there's a scene where Rey is tuning into and meditating on the light. And she immediately starts to notice the darkness and she jumps right to it and tries to jump down that dark rabbit hole into the darkness. It is a choice. You, your life is full of both positive energy and negative energy. And you can choose which of the two that you want to focus on, whether you are perfectly healthy running a marathon or you're sick at home or in a hospital. You still have a choice as to where you direct your energy. Well said, Tristan. Well said. And what we're doing is uh, we're only running the, the program here for an hour. There, there are some storms in the area. And, you know, one of the hosts isn't feeling very well or one of the uh, guests isn't feeling very well this evening. So what we're going to do is, uh, you know, you guys, you got those readings here. Of course, we're going to get the archive up here in just a little while. But, uh, Tristan, do you have any final thoughts that uh, you, you'd like to give the audience um, perhaps on – if, if they feel like they're sensitive or, you know, how, how they can pursue a, a, maybe a, a productive, a lucrative career um, with what you do and also about anything you have upcoming, uh, your books, uh, anything like that you want to get out to the people. The mic is yours. Think positive. Negativity is the devil. Bobby Bonita is the devil. It's all about <laughs> focusing on positivity because your mind is a part of your spirituality and a part of who you are in the physical state. The healthier your mind is, the healthier your thoughts are, the more you're going to be able to listen to your intuition and listen to your gut instinct. Because every time your instinct kicks in and something starts to come across to you, whether it's your mind telling you, your spirit telling you, take this job, don't take this job, you know, go on this date, don't go on on that date, your mind, the negative aspect of you, your ego oftentimes will kick in and try to solve the equation, even when there is no equation to solve, and you'll fall down the rabbit hole. So the whole process of being a psychic of being intuitive is learning to monitor your thoughts. Siddhartha Buddha referred to it as a state of consciousness. A, a way to separate yourself from your mind and to see your thoughts instead of be your thoughts. That is literally the first step to being intuitive. The first step to being psychic is to just recognize what you're thinking and why you're thinking what you're thinking. Is it coming from your mind, from your ego, or is it coming from spirit? The more that you can start to discern between the two, the more that you can start to listen to your spirit instead of your fears, your mind, and your thoughts. And, and that can be through reading books about intuition, watching TV shows, listening to radio programs like this. Conversations like this can open your mind up to think in a different way and to consider things beyond what are considered possible. Uh, my official website is tristanrimbo.com, and my psychic memoir is called Through Psychic Eyes. It's available anywhere ebooks are sold, including the Google Play Store. Just search for Tristan Rimbo. Very nice. Tristan, it's always great having you on the show. And of course, we're going to have you back here. We're going to have some more of these here coming up in the near future, folks. And, you know, sorry to cut the things short this evening, but, hey, we've got, uh, we, we, we can't stop Mother Nature in, in both ways, with storms or with illness that happens. So everybody, make sure you, you, you kind of um, stay healthy out there. Drink some vitamin C, take some uh, good, uh, I don't know, eat better, do something. There's a lot of people <laughs> being sick out there. It seems to be plaguing the nation. But be sure, join us live tomorrow night. Paranormal Experience Radio, Cat Hobson. That's going to air live 8 Eastern, 7 Central. And, of course, Friday night, you're going to have Ghost Talk Radio with Shelley Burke-Robertson. And her guest co-host is going to be, of course, Kristen Boyd. 
Now, following that's going to be Fate Radio, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. And, of course, Sunday night, you've got a gang of girls radio right there at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Monday nights, check out Surviving Evidence, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. And John Tobin, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right there. Tuesday nights, Haunted Voices Radio follows that at 9 Eastern. You can see the full schedule right there at letstalkradio.net. Just click on Schedule, and you'll be able to click that and get all the guest information. So we definitely want to thank Tristan Mimbo and Ario Grace for joining us this evening, and all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for the Wheel of Psychic show. It's just a lot of fun, a lot of fun out there. And all of you guys have a great week. More Haunted Voices Radio coming at you next week, same time, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, Tuesday night. Take care, folks.